What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Raw Built. You know, sometimes I make mistakes in the short-term rental game and my real estate journey and I do I do want to talk about it today. Don't you dare. You 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 speed up. You speed up. It's on you. So, uh, about 1 year ago today. No, that's not true. It wasn't today. I I probably I could go and verify that right now, but I'm going to be honest, I don't want to do that at this particular juncture. About 1 year ago, I sold Casa Mariposa. This was my premier build. This is right after I built Casa Conejo, my 303 square foot tiny home in Joshua Tree, California. Right around the completion of that tiny home, I decided to build Casa Mariposa, my 880 square foot small home. It was a two bedroom, two bath, and we actually had no intention on ever selling it because we spent about a year building it. Um, I think it took, honestly, from start to finish with permitting and construction loans and closing on the land and final inspections and everything, it took 18 months. And it really was our pride and joy. And we listed it on Airbnb and we were making really flipping good money. I mean, I think our first two months we were grossing between ten and fifteen thousand dollars a month and so we told ourselves oh my god like this really nailed it we were about two or three minutes away from the national park and we were estimating to gross between 130 and 150 thousand dollars and then our realtor was like hey this is a really beautiful house have you considered selling it and we're like no no and he was like come on just list it what would cause you to sell this and we thought well we built this for two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and a stupid stupid price for this I guess would be six hundred and fifty thousand if someone is dumb enough to pay that, we'll sell it. Where did you find that? Some kid back in town. And he was like, great, no problem. Let's list it for $650,000. And we're like, Pfft. Okay, I guess if we get that as an offer, let's do it. And so we listed it and then we started getting requests to see the home and we got probably like eight to 10 in the span of a week, but we had to keep canceling on them because our place was so booked on Airbnb and we didn't want to have to cancel on a reservation. So we're like, hey, whenever people can get in, they, 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 they'll they have to just figure it out with their schedule. And so eventually, I think after about a month of having it listed and just canceling on people left and right, we were sort of getting cold feet on selling the house. And I told my partner, I was like, dude, I don't think we should sell this man we're making so much money on this property on airbnb and he was like yeah all right i'll call a realtor and let him know this was like a saturday night and literally that night our realtor shot us a text and said we got two full price offers on that property and we were like oh man it kind of put me and him in a tough spot because we didn't want to sell it but our realtor had do done so much work marketing it listing it showing it spending his time and so when i put other people's time on the line you know I i'll waste my time gladly but when it starts wasting the time of other people it you know I it's it means something to me, right? And so I was like, okay, I guess we have to go forward with it. We're, let's just be assholes and like, and if they want a bunch of different repairs and concessions and this and that, we just won't do it. And unfortunately, since it's a new house, there weren't really a lot of issues. Oh, and then we had two full price offers. So we couldn't really say no because they were giving us what we asked. So we said, oh, you know what? You'll have to buy our furniture too. It's another $20,000. And then one person was like, no problem, I'll buy it. And then we were like, dang it. So fast forward, we end up closing on that property and we make a $400,000 profit on it. <laughs> he said, nah, man, everyone is actually pretty cool. We talked for a while. She was crying. They're going to help us find another land. Who was crying? Ooh, this is really good fodder for an upcoming video. Listen, when the sun is shining and it's golden hour and it's setting, you chase the good lighting. Let's go. Bro, it is hot. I know that it looks like it's not hot, but it's hot pockets out here. Okay, so fast forward to today and uh, that property sale actually ended up panning out for us because with that $400,000 profit, we ended up putting that into a 1031 exchange, deferring our taxes on it and effectively using that to reinvest in more properties tax free. Now there are a lot of stipulations and criteria that you have to follow whenever you're going through a 1031 exchange, but basically you're kicking your tax liability down the road and every single time you sell that property, you have to use those profits and reinvest them into other properties, ultimately deferring your tax liability further further and further until you die it's a because if there's two things that are guaranteed in life is that you have to pay taxes and you're gonna die however that's actually not true because if you die then you don't got to pay the taxes oh my god I just figured out the greatest loophole of all time what if we just all died what with that <laughs> What, a, what an adventure we just took there. All right, keep all that in. That was gold. And me telling you that is gold makes it even more golden. So all that profit went into two properties that we bought, turned into Airbnbs. We bought a home and did what's called a burster, a burr into a short-term rental. We turned that into an Airbnb. And then we bought 47 acres in Shenandoah where we were trying to permit a glamp side operation. So that whole side of the business is actually really panning out for us in a lot of cool different ways. Where we had some issues with the 47 acres that we'll talk about in a later video. Cool, we talked for a while. 
towel. She was crying. They're gonna help us find another land. But effectively, no true regrets on selling the home until just one little thing. I decided to look it up and see if the owners were listing it on Airbnb. And to my surprise, it looks like that property was purchased by Avant Stay. If you don't know anything about Avant Stay, they're like a very premium version of Airbnb. Now they still actually list on Airbnb, but I think you can actually do direct bookings to them as well. And their whole thing is that when you book an Avant Stay, it's like a very guaranteed, beautiful, amazing, amenity-driven Airbnb. And I was like, okay, no problem. And so I actually hopped into the calendar and noticed that they were booking the property for anywhere from $700 to $1,400 a night, bro. Bro, 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 bro. We were booking it for like 150 to like $300 a night. And that's like really crazy. And like, now that I see that we could have been making 700 to $1,400 a night, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit regretful. So what I wanted to do was go hop back in the studio, take a look at that listing and see how Avant Stay, uh, a premium Airbnb company changed my property. And actually, they actually are a premium Airbnb company. And like, they actually did do some really cool stuff to it. So I'm just messing around. I mean, I'm like a little salty about it, but let's go into the studio and let me show you what they actually did because actually respect game recognized game so let's go take a look let's calculate how much they might be making every year off of the property that i built with my own two hands as i typed and texted all my contractors to actually build it with their two hands all right let's go and we're back in the studio where it's a nice crisp 71 degrees and oh my goodness it's dry in here and my shirt has dried off and i have adequately dried off my body and i wanted to show you casa mariposa and some of the changes that avant stay has made to the property and for the most part i think they did pretty well so here in the actual outdoor space you can actually see they did quite a bit i bought this restoration hardware table at an outlet for a couple hundred bucks i bought all these chairs the carpet the bench we hung up the hanging chair so you could look at this freaking awesome mountain of rocks over here they actually came in and jazzed it up quite a bit they added another little area out here i mean this was meant to be for parking but you know i guess they want people to park outside in the desert and <laughs> burn up alive when they get inside their car, but that's fine. It looks really nice. For reference, I'll show you what it looked like when I sold it. And yes, Dwell did do a write-up on my property. Thank you very much, Dwell. Appreciate it. I felt accomplished, like I, like I arrived when I saw them publish my property. So you can see it was like pretty empty here. I was hoping that we'd get a view. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I guess you can't really see much of a difference here. And this was before we actually had the pergola painted black. But for the most part, this little section here stayed intact. So they didn't completely change my vision. So outside, all the same, all the landscaping stayed the same. Really cool to see someone else photograph it. I really love capturing Joshua Tree right at golden hour when the sun is setting. It's a purpley sky. It's just all around vibes. Okay, yeah, so here they actually did quite a bit of stuff. They installed a little concrete pad here. They put these lounge chairs out so I guess you can tan with the umbrellas although this is a really busy road so you're probably not gonna be chilling in your speedo here because people will see you now here in the living room there actually were a couple of changes so they changed up a little bit of the shelves but for the most part they kept a lot of it exactly the same they moved this couch over and then they just changed out the the accent chairs that we had which I don't know I think part of what Avant stays does is they have a designer come in and spice it up and put their little touch on it and so I imagine that that designer in order to feel like they're bringing value to the team and they want to make their Paycheck. They probably just changed more than they needed to because honestly, I feel like we set it up pretty well. I actually think this is better. I actually got advice from an interior design architect and said that this was probably the best way to utilize the living room specifically because it keeps it open. Whereas if you put the couch here, it sort of closes it off. But I'm curious, what do you think? Do you like A or B? Vote down in the comments below. Aside from that, not a lot of huge changes. They did a little gas fire pit on the side here with these cool little chairs. I like this a lot. This is stuff that I wanted to do, but to be honest, we were just so over budget on this project that we just couldn't. They definitely did really cool art. I actually like this art better than the art we had and did a little entry table here. So overall, I think they were very respectful of the architectural style of Casa Mariposa. Yeah, see with this layout, I said, I don't know. I still don't think I like this. I think it's a little weird to walk in and immediately see a couch over to your left, but you know, to each their own. Oh, that's interesting. They put like a guitar, a guitar amp or like some kind of dresser or something. Oh, a record player. Nice. Yeah. Good little touch. And then the art, I can't really see what it is here, but it fits the overall Joshua Tree vibe. <laughs> Okay, well this is bougie. I don't know, they added like a charcuterie plate. Not a charcuterie plate, but like a, a veggie plate, but instead of staging it with like carrots and, and celery and stuff, they just did whole ass artichokes. Just, ah, artichokes. Nothing says luxury like having to <laughs> boil your own artichoke and eat that as a snack. It's an oddly specific choice because artichoke? I genuinely feel like the photographer just had artichoke for lunch and had and forgot that it was there when he was taking the photo or when she was taking the photo. Anyway, well, oh, but see, they have a real ch charcuterie board here so it's like why both like why you know what 
I do find great offense here. I'm actually very offended that they removed my freaking green Kate Spade tea kettle. I spent so long looking for that tea kettle to match the freaking green of these chairs, and they have the audacity to switch it with a plant. I mean, I like the plant actually, but I mean, these little vases, these little vases, no, come on. Come on guys, I think, again, interior designer a little bit on a power trip and they're like, eh, out with it. Or someone stole the tea kettle, which is probably more likely because that tea kettle is like 60 or $75. I honestly can't remember. I remember spending so much on that tea kettle that I didn't actually want to tell my partner that I spent that much on it. So he still doesn't know how much I paid for it. By the way, guitar in an Airbnb, I really like the idea of it, but as a guitarist, there's no way that that guitar is like nice. All right, so this room is pretty much identical, except they put a painting here, which I respect. However, it's not centered with the mini split and that really bothers me. But they kept my little mural here that I designed with a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, just charming all around. Yep, everything here I bought. Yep, everything here looks the same. So they really didn't change too much. Even this, I'm honestly surprised that they kept my furniture rack here. By the way, if you want my shopping list on everything that I bought here and everything that I ever buy in general, I'll link it down in the description below. If you're furnishing an Airbnb, this is immensely helpful. It'll save you like literally a dozen hours when you're shopping for your Airbnb. I think I see too many mixtures of design palettes here. I mean, like a Pier 1 like beachy coastal thing and they're like this is like a Scandinavian bed and then this is like a boho rack and then you got like the Moroccan wicker plates. I don't really remember what these are. So a lot of stuff going on here. I actually think that they did worse with this room than the way I left it, but that's okay. It's probably just a preference thing. I mean, I can see why someone would think this looks good. Okay, so they really did amp up the outdoor space here. I, I gotta give them credit on that. I mean, they added a fence around the entire perimeter, which I respect and it's something that we wanted to do and we actually had my contractor add the fence and he built it incorrectly. We wanted that fence right there but he did your typical like six foot fence with the round tops on it and then he installed it. My realtor was like, uh, you need, you need to look at this. And he sent me a photo and I called my contractor. I was like, bro, I literally set a modern horizontal fence. And he was like, oh man, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew I needed a photo. And that was kind of a beef on both of our parts. So whatever, it was like no harm, no foul. But I like this, like they include the entire property. It definitely feels more private, more serene. And yeah, oh, and they added a hot tub. And as I talked about in my video, like two or three weeks ago, the number one way you can really jazz up and really boost the ADR, the average daily rate of your Airbnb is by adding a water feature like a hot tub. Props to them and they also added hammock. So from an outdoor perspective, they completely crushed us and like we should have done this stuff, but we didn't. And because because of that, like they're bringing in quite a bit of money. Like, let's take a look at how much they're charging. If you just look at their calendar, their next availability is gonna be in October. And it looks like it typically goes for $7.84 a night. But just watch this. As we get into the busy season, that price starts going up a little bit. That's $6.60, $8.56. Now we'll get into January, $8.80. Let's get a weekend in here. $1,200 freaking wild, 1200 bucks, just like crazy. In March, 800 bucks, so I'm just like really, I never would have imagined charging $1,000, 1200 bucks for this place. So yeah, kudos to them. So if they're even bringing in like, I mean an average, averaging that out, looks like their average is probably gonna be closer to like, we'll call it like 850, um, probably gonna be a little higher than that, but 850 times 365, it's $310,000 a year, but they're obviously not gonna be occupied 100% of the year. So let's just say they're occupied 70% of the year. They're bringing in $217,000 on this property. Obviously there's expenses and everything like that. That's really hard for me to wrap my mind around as the person that built this for $275,000. Can you imagine buying a property and gross almost what you paid to build it. It's crazy. And I thought I was like honestly getting a really great deal on my end, but now looking at it from their end, I sold it to someone for 650. Avance would have had to come and buy it from them. Maybe they're managing it for the person, but I know Avance goes out and buys it. But if they bought it from that person, they might've bought it for 850, which might seem like a bad deal considering how small it is and it's in Joshua Tree, California. But these numbers work out. If you can gross 217 on an $850,000 property, congratulations, that's a great return. So congratulations to the owner of this property whether it's Avance or not. I did pretty good if Avance decided to take this property under their wing. And honestly, this property did so good that other people have stolen my design. Check this out. Someone literally like is selling this land for $125,000 in the concept art is Casa Mariposa. They changed it up a little bit, but come on. Obviously this is my house, my design. Like, 
I guess I'm flattered, but I'm like, really? Like, I kind of like what they did, but you know, it's copping my design right there. This is cool. Oh, there's like an infinity pool right there. Oh, come on. That's kind of cool. The infinity pool at the front of the house though, eh, it doesn't make as much sense as putting it in the back. But whatever, we're not gonna critique this right now. Okay, well that's it. That's the story of how I built my house and made a $400,000 profit and thought that I made out like a bandit, only to find out that someone else bought it and then it got purchased again and now it's making $1,200 a night on a weekend. And then also the story about how the house is so cool that other people decided to steal my design, which happens more often than not, which is like the good and the bad of the channel is, I inspire people and I teach you how to build your own real estate businesses and tiny house businesses. But the bittersweet side of it is that people want to steal my exact blueprints and like business plan and locations. And it's actually one of the reasons that I shut down my consultation business, which actually maybe I'll do a video on that. But I'm actually going to be designing my own custom blueprints and they'll be available for sale in the coming months. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks so much for watching and have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. Hopefully I'll be drier. But honestly, I probably won't because I still live in Houston and it's still freaking hot outside every day so i'll probably be even sweatier in the next video oh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want more updates on when people buy my house and make a lot more money than me all right see you bye